Hello everybody, welcome back to Compound and Everything. My name is Chris, and for those of you that are new here, this channel is dedicated to all things investing, finance, and business, with the single goal of helping you build and grow a long-term successful stock market portfolio. Now in this video, we are going to be going over two very popular index fund ETFs. The first being FANG, and the second being NDQ. Now for those of you that don't know, FANG is tracking the top 10 listed companies on the NASDAQ and NDQ is tracking the NASDAQ 100, which is 100 companies. So to simplify things, I'm going to break this video down into two sections. The first covering the difference between both of these funds and then I'll go over which one I prefer right now, when I'm going to buy and how I think that will probably change in the future. Anyway, let's get this one started. Like I said, we are going to kick things off by talking about the points of difference between these two funds. And before you skip forward, there are some significant differences between these two funds that I think you guys would be interested in. So let's start with a head-to-head -head comparison of these funds. When it comes to market capitalization, we can see that the newer fund, which is FANG, is still finding its feet on roughly $48 million. Now, to be fair here, NDQ have had a little bit more time here to grow their portfolio and gain a little bit more traction, which results in them sitting on a market capitalization of just under $1 billion. So when we look at management fees, we can see that they are both somewhat similar with NDQ coming in at a 0.38 of a percent management fee and FANG coming in at 0.35 of a percent. Now, although I wouldn't class these as sort of low cost index funds, I also wouldn't go as far to sort of call them expensive. They certainly sit somewhere in the middle and it wouldn't be a deciding factor for me if I were to buy them or not. So next, let's take a look at you absolutely smashing that like button. So I know I ask all the time, however, if this video does get 1500 likes, I am going to finally, and I mean finally, start the public portfolio that everybody has been waiting for. So if you're interested in that, feel free to tap that like button and it will happen. Anyway, let's get back to the video and take a look at both funds PE ratios. Now, when we glance at the fact sheets provided by both fund managers, we can see that as of the 30th of June, FANG was trading 62 times earnings. Now, the NDQ fact sheet on the same date what also had them trading at 30 times earnings. And I mean, I haven't done the exact math here. However, these figures would actually be slightly higher now. As in July, as you guys know, the FANG stocks and most tech stocks in general had a significant rally in the last sort of few weeks. However, we will come back to this a little bit later in the video. Now, moving on from those PE ratios, let's take a look at the historical returns of each fund. Now, of course, FANG is only six months old. So to gauge a return on what you may have received from a fund like this, we will have to use the underlying index. Now, as a guide, we can see over that same period that FANG as an ETF would have returned roughly 22% over the last five years. The same type of numbers are coming out of NDQ, which has returned roughly 21.8% over the same period. Now, I will mention here that although these numbers are incredibly impressive, it's not overly surprising. I mean, this has been, at least so far, one of the greatest tech bull runs in history. So, I mean, it really is to be expected that the index tracking these equities would have produced sort of astronomical returns. Now, before we move on to the holdings of each of these funds, let's quickly cover hedging. Now, for those of you that are new to investing, hedging in this sense would mean that there is some kind of protection between the Australian dollar weakening against the US dollar. Now, of course, this can work, work both ways for and against you. However, neither of these funds do offer any type of currency hedge. And although I'm far from being a Forex expert here, I am a little worried about the strength of the Aussie dollar short term. And honestly, whether this bothers you or not really comes down to how long you plan on holding the fund, where you think the Aussie dollar will go, and more importantly, how you think these companies will perform. Because at the end of the day, if we can see half of the returns produced over the last five years throughout the next five years, then the dollar probably isn't going to be a concern for me over a longer period of time. Now, I'm sure nobody is really buying these funds for their dividends. However, it is worth noting that for those who perhaps aren't interested in paying more income tax or just aren't interested in dividends altogether, then you might have to consider your options here because these funds can produce anywhere between 1% and 3% distributions annually. So this brings us to the fun part, which is why we're here in the first place. 
In my last video, I had at least five or 10 comments saying, Chris, why are you wanting to buy NDQ? Fang is a cheaper and much better option. And I wanted to address why that's not entirely accurate and it really depends on your personal situation and goals. Firstly, let's compare the holdings of each fund. So here we can see the holdings for FANG, which represents the 10 largest companies listed on the NASDAQ 100. However, here on the right, we can see the holdings of NDQ, which is roughly 100 companies reflecting the NASDAQ 100. Obviously, you guys can see where I'm heading with this. So we've covered the fees, we've covered the historical returns, hedging, dividends, current PE ratios of each fund, and now we've gone over the basic holdings of each. So let's go into a little more detail on the holdings of these funds and mainly what the differences are and if it actually matters at all. So from my perspective here, the main difference is actually the distributions of these funds and what your goals would be. So FANG is dedicated to matching these famous FANG stocks, companies like Apple, Tesla, Amazon, Nvidia, um, Netflix, Google, Alibaba, Facebook, and Twitter. Whereas NDQ also holds these companies, but also distributes their funds throughout the entire NASDAQ 100. So at this point in time, if you're wanting to hold the 10 largest tech stocks in America without the fuss of buying each one individually, then of course FANG seems to be a great option. However, if you are looking at a little bit more exposure to the true index that is the NASDAQ 100, then you might be more interested in NDQ. Now, of course, either way, those top 10 companies make up a significant part of both funds. In fact, I was reading an article this week that mentioned 25% of the S&P 500 is actually controlled by five stocks, which are Apple, Microsoft, Alphabet, Amazon, and Facebook. Just think about that for a second. 25% of the largest index in the world is controlled by five companies, leaving the other 495 companies to share the remaining 75%. So if those five companies make up 25% of the S&P 500, does it actually matter which one you buy when it comes to the NASDAQ 100? I mean, the management costs are similar, both don't hedge, both are extremely liquid, and both are tracking their own index. And honestly, it's a pretty fair question to ask. Like I said, I think if you're just looking for exposure to the 10 blockbuster companies and not worried about the diversification of the other 90 odd companies on the NASDAQ 100, then sure. Fang might be a great choice for you. However, for me personally, I like the idea of having the exposure to the top 100 companies listed on the NASDAQ. And when I start to sort of narrow down that list, I have to focus more on valuations and not general index tracking funds. Now, speaking of valuations, like I said earlier, Fang is trading at 62 times earnings and NDQ is trading at 30 times earnings. I mean, that's pretty damn expensive, historically speaking. And although I'm not about timing the market, when it comes to funds like these, I think there is a right time to buy and a wrong time to buy. And historically speaking, right now, I would be paying a premium at 62 times earnings. Now, I'm not worried about missing out on some gains here short term. And yes, I could be wrong. None of us know what will happen. I have to simply try and use probability and historical data to gain a slight edge. So the question I'm often asking myself would be, is this the one time that history won't repeat? Is this the one time that the future is looking so incredible that these valuations are actually reasonable? Because we all know what these companies are capable of long term. However, we're also looking down the barrel of the perfect storm when it comes to our economy, equity markets, and bond markets. There can be no doubt right now that the risk is on the downside, especially when these companies are running so hard in such uncertain times. And yes, we are taught to be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful. And right now, in my opinion, there is so much greed surrounding this market. So what am I doing and what's my plan right now when it comes to Andy Q and Fang? Like I said in a video last week, I love Andy Q and I will be buying it sometime in the future as more of a sort of long-term superannuation slash 401k type investment. However, if I do want targeted exposure to the top 10 NASDAQ stocks as FANG provides, I would need to assess each company individually and then sort of purchase them separately. I would not personally 
be buying into 62 times earnings across the board in times like these. However, I would like to say here that if we did experience a market sell-off and the forward-facing PE that these funds represented right now was to meet more reasonable sort of conditions, I would be purchasing both of these funds very quickly for a long-term hold. So I guess that's my take on Andy Q and Fang at this point in time. I don't consider myself to be a guru or an investing genius, and I do get things wrong. So if you think I've missed something in this video, or maybe you don't agree with my logic here, just comment below and we can definitely have that discussion. At the end of the day, the more opinions we can be exposed to, the more we can learn. So I'd love to hear from you guys in the comment section below. Also, I have decided to try and push out a little more content throughout the week. If you have a stock, a subject, or a question you'd like covered, once again, just comment below and hopefully I can put something together discussing the topic or answering your question. As always, guys, feel free to tap the like button. And of course, if you did enjoy the content, please subscribe and ding the notification bell next to it. I put out at least three videos every week. Thanks again for watching. If you are interested in learning more about index funds, feel free to watch this video here. Or perhaps you're interested in learning more about Warren Buffett's most recent purchase. Feel free to click this video here. Anyway, guys, thanks again for watching this video and I'll see you in my next episode. Cheers.